This is not about who should attend or who should speak. It's about who should set the agenda. And that's what's important to note here. As a co-sponsor, they're a part of setting the agenda. And it's hard to, to really grasp the idea that those who are working to redefine marriage can sit at the same table and discuss, discuss strategy with those who are trying to promote and protect traditional marriage. At this stage, does CPAC lose its influence because of your participation? Absolutely not. And I, I, let, me, let me start off by saying, Andrea, uh, I feel a little bit like Bob Dole here uh, after listening to Tony. Uh, the fact is, is Tony needs to stop lying about our record. Uh, he keeps talking about redefining marriage when if you go and you look at our legislative agenda, GoProud doesn't even have a position on marriage beyond believing that marriage ought to be decided by the states. Uh, and we prefer it be decided by the people, not through the courts. I mean, so you know, he can dress this up all he wants and talk about family and redefining marriage, but that doesn't have anything to do with it. The bottom line is people like Tony Perkins are in the, the industry of demonizing gay people. The reason why Tony, you know, and the Joseph Farah, the World Net Daily crowd, the extreme fringe of the conservative movement, why they're not participating, the bottom line is has nothing to do with policy at all. It's because we happen to be gay. If they were going to boycott, were they going to boycott Dick Cheney speaking? Because Dick Cheney has the same position on marriage as we have. Or Ambassador John Bolton? You know, are they going to, you know, you know, you know, who does this litmus test apply to? Why does it only apply to the people who actually happen to be gay? Look, it has nothing to do with policy, nothing at all.